Hello and welcome to Greatest Somerville for September 27th, 2016. I'm Joe Lynch. It is my pleasure to welcome back to Somerville Community Access Television State Representative Christine Barber. She is from, represents the 34th Middlesex District, which includes parts of Somerville and Medford. First elected to the House in 2014, Representative Barber is seeking re-election in November and does not have an opponent. Focused on affordable housing, the Green Line extension, the health of the Mystic River, and the environment, along with a plethora of other issues that reach across district lines, it is my pleasure to welcome State Representative Christine Barber back to Greater Somerville. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. It's my favorite scat show. So I know. Thank you. Let's, let's not tell the other producers oh, okay. that. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> I want to thank you for being so patient. You were patient all during the summer when we had um, all the primary candidates in here. And you and I had touched base early in the summer. And I said, I promise you, September, October, we'll have you back. Right. Yes. I'm a man of my word, Christine. Yes, I appreciate that and very happy to be here. And during the primary, I respect that there was a different focus. So, um, Results. I know that mm -hmm. you were working diligently for um, the re-election for mm -hmm. State Senator Pat Jalen. Yes, very A resounding happy victory that. at yes. 80%. Yes. Yep. Yes. And then uh, you'll have a new colleague joining you. Yes. I, I uh, work very closely with Denise Provost, and also I've worked very closely with Tim Toomey, who has just been a, a pleasure to work with, and I wish him all the best. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to meet and get to know Mike Connolly and, and working with him in the future. Yep. Mike Connolly, it was his second run at the seat. So, yes. Two times a charm. That's right. Two times a charm. You know, on behalf of Greater Somerville, we did wish uh, State Representative Toomey very well yes. uh, on the first show of the season. So now you'll have a new face mm -hmm. that uh, you and State Representative uh, Denise Provo and Senator Jalen will be able to uh, lead around the State House and get, <laughs> right. teach them teach the, the ways. So you've been, um, even though you know, have an opponent come November 8th, you're campaigning. Yes. What's that all about, Christy? Um, <laughs> It's important, and I actually, I really enjoy canvassing. I know maybe not everyone would see that going door to door as being a, a fun thing, but it's how I get out and make sure that I'm meeting and hearing from my constituents. It's the most, one of the most important parts of my job, so it gives me an opportunity to get out and to do that even though I don't have an opponent. so. I'm and I sure. notice more and more, uh, more and more elected officials are doing their sidewalk office hours. Mm -hmm. And you have some coming up. I know that um, they're in October. Yeah, so, so I, don't, um, I don't have an, a, an official office in, in Somerville or Medford, but I try to do office hours at different places where it's easy for people to get to. So in October on Saturday, I have not yet chosen the Saturdays, but we're going to do Angelina's in Teal Square, mm -hmm. come by and get a slice of pizza. And I believe I'll be doing that with Katiana Ballantyne, the alderman, mm -hmm. and Carrie Normand, who is the local school committee member that has worked really well there. Um, and then in Winter Hill, which is the other part of my district, Ward 4, Winter Hill and 10 Hills, um, I will be doing them at the Winter Hill Brewery, but in the morning. Um, for coffee, I know. Uh, it seems to be a, a popular place and good to meet people there. So. It's a great location. Let me give them a plug. I hate doing <laughs> this, but I'll give them a plug because they are so they're multifaceted at this point. Um, they also have a pop-up farmer's yes. market that yes. they're doing, yes. and I happened to meet the gentleman, Matt Gray. Yes. Matt Gray. Yes. Happened to meet him a few yes. weeks ago, and we're, we're trying to lure him into Ward 5. So. Just a plug. So it's been a challenge for Ward 4. There isn't a lot of affordable fresh food in that neighborhood. So it's great that the, the brewery is a, is a really good community partner in yeah. that effort. So. so let's go to, you know, you're, you're going for a second time around in re-election. Um, you know the district very well. What are the voters saying? What's on their minds for this year's election? For this year? So uh, by far what I hear about the most is affordable housing. Um, we all know that there is a, a really a crisis in Somerville, and I hear that in Medford in my district as well. Um, I do think the good news is that Somerville has taken steps and is continuing to try to figure this out on the city level. 
On the state level, there are things that we're trying to do. We've you know, put a lot more money into housing vouchers, which is something that the feds used to do with Section 8, and they have not been adding money to that. That's so we, really caused a stress on the Massachusetts it really has. budget. So in, in Massachusetts, we have done, I think, a really admirable job in increasing those funds exponentially, but we can't keep up. I mean, it's such a, it's so expensive for lower income and middle class families here um, in, in not just Somerville, but the whole region. But it's such a struggle. Um, so we've put a lot more money into subsidies, which has been a big focus for both families and for people with disabilities um, and for seniors. And I've been working on a bill to try to incentivize other parts of the region to build more multifamily housing mm -hmm. near transit sites. We know Somerville can't do it alone. We don't have much more room in Somerville to build. We've done a great job. A lot of people live here, but we need other cities to do their part and other towns as mm -hmm. well. So I have a bill to incentivize multifamily housing near near transit and near shops and still working on that. And I'm hopeful for next session. Good. So. And I know that, uh, nice segue into near transit stops. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're, when we first met yes. many years ago, we first met over the issue of the Green Line. Right. Right. Um, you know, I keep having this recurring bad dream that we're all going to be retiring, still talking about the Green Line. But any updates you want to give the public on yeah, the Green Line? Yeah, so that's obviously the second thing. After affordable housing, the Green Line is what I'm hearing about. Um, it's obviously a great project with tons of support. We did just get a sort of a, a tentative okay from the federal government that they have been looking at our project. And as people know, about a billion dollars of this comes from the federal government. Right. So and they're looking at the approval. revised plan right. at this point. We need them to look at the revised plan and give it their blessing. So they said it looks good. We're still doing our due diligence, but all signals look good, which is great news. Um, and we're continuing to press the state to keep moving forward as quickly as possible. Um, and I know, I know people are frustrated. I know it's been decades at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think we're, we're in a good place. It could have gone a different way last year. And Meaning they could have canceled the whole thing. They could have canceled it. And I think that was the, the point where they, they really would have. And the fact that they didn't and we're moving forward, I think, is a really positive signal. And I do, I just really appreciate the, yes, me and Senator Jalen and, and Rep Provost can go to all these meetings and, and you know, talk over and over about it, but the number of people from Somerville and from Medford, and from Cambridge, who came to hearings, came to meetings here in Boston and talked about this project, I mean, that is why it is still being on the books to be planned. It's got honestly. the support of the business community. and the residential communities here. Yeah, business. We had, you know, Greentown Labs come and talk about it. We've had, you know, community groups come and talk about it. We've had transit activists and schools, and it, it just makes so much sense. So that's why it's still. So I appreciate that support. It's been huge. As part of that revision, though, it wasn't very, very good news for Medford, yes. was that they will stop um, at the beginning of the Medford Somerville line right. and go no further. Right. How, how has that reaction been in Medford? Yeah, so the terminus right now is College Ave on basically on Tufts campus. Um, and that is part of my district also, that part of Medford, Medford Hillside. It's a real challenge. I'm very supportive of the project going all the way to Route 16, as many people in Medford and Somerville are. Um, it makes so much sense for pulling people from the suburbs to get them on the T, pulling cars off the road, accessibility, lots of lots of reasons. Um, unfortunately, that is not part of the current project. Um, we did get the state MassDOT, the Department of Transportation, to say they would do an environmental assessment and start design of that station. It's farther than we've ever gotten in that, so that's good. Um, can I, it's can still, I put you yeah. on the spot, though, and say how realistic do you how think that's going to be? We are, I'm, we're continuing to hold their feet to the fire and every opportunity we can bring up Route 16 as a really necessary piece of the project. I think it's going to take some creative um, ways of, of honestly finding the money because we know there's such limited money for infrastructure. So we're trying to come up with 
public-private partnerships, mm -hmm. you know, other mm -hmm. other mechanisms, because that is going to be a challenge. Because that Route 16, you know, when they originally talked about that Route 16 being determinous, mm -hmm. that has an enormous business park mm -hmm. that's associated mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. You know, for the folks at home who watch this, it's out at El Wife Brook Parkway, basically the big U-Haul area there, Cummings Park. and. I mean, it made sense to me, and you know that you know your friends in Medford, Ken Krause, and all the rest of them. I was fully on board that that made the most sense. But Green Line coming to Somerville, now people are saying, you know, 2021, 2022. You know, I think people are getting meeting out about this thing. They just want to see more progress. We did see some of the bridges being reconstructed. We've seen. I live very close to the rail bed itself, so I've seen some of the stuff that they're doing. But is that a you get a sense of aggravation from the voters Definitely. about and it? That's completely understandable. That people are frustrated, and it's hard to see the bridge work. It's hard to see real changes. Right. You know, the Medford Street Bridge, which seemed to be closed for a long time, it's hard to see real progress. Um, so I think you know we're continuing to work with MassDOT and say, well, what what can you? start to build things that obviously have an impact on people's lives mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. So, yes, hold on. If, if anything else on the Green Line update? We're continuing Let, to work, so let's yes. Let's move right into more transportation issues, and it's the original transportation highway, which is the Mystic River. Mm -hmm. um, in your district or our district, okay. you know, that's what they used. That's right. Um, you're a fierce advocate for Mystic River watershed folks, for the cleanup of the river, for getting rid of all those nasty old discharge pipes that were built illegally hundreds of years ago. The health of the river itself, what is it these days? It is much better, I would say, than in the past. Um, it got, I believe, an A- minus in the part of the river that is... Um, kind of what we think of as that runs through Somerville and Medford, the Mystic Lakes in, in Medford and A+. Plus. Um, and some of the, um, the tributaries that flow into it are really the problem areas. Right. Um, but the, the main stretch of the river in our communities is much better than it has been in the past. And that, again, is a lot due to community involvement in, in the river. So we've been able to get funding the last few years in the budget for the invasive species removal. So the water chestnuts. The water that chestnuts, the yeah. Um, that people, the volunteers go in and pull up themselves, which is great, um, but unfortunately would take uh, very, very long to, to do by hand. So we've been fortunate to get some money in the state budget for a mechanical harvester to go out there and. If you look, um, the Mystic River Watershed Association has a video of the time-lapse photography, and it's a huge difference on the river when the harvester can come through and just clean that just up. Just take them out. Yeah. yeah. Improves the health of the river yeah. enormously. For anybody, you know, watching this at home, um, when we talk about the water chestnuts, everyone says, oh, they're beautiful lilies on the, mm -hmm. on the surface yeah. of the river. What they don't understand is that it's sucking the nutrients and the oxygen out of the river itself. Most prevalent can be seen by um, over in Medford when you cross over the bridge uh, by Meadow Glen. Yep. If you look down river, you can see just masses of these things. So. And a lot of those are invasive, and that's a problem with a lot of the even the growth around the river, the bittersweet, and they're invasive plants that are that are choking the the wildlife in the area mm -hmm. and the the health of that area. So mm -hmm. it's we've been able to secure some money to uh, safely. Uh, get rid of some of those invasives, which has really helped. Um, across from Somerville, McDonald Park, which is sort of across from Ten mm -hmm. Hills, mm -hmm. we've been able to clean up um, some of the areas there that were really unsafe and uh, cutting off some of the the, um, the healthy vegetation around the river. So that, that's that been good. And, and working with DCR and some state money we could get for them, um, that was a Great. good win. Let's stay with the river for a minute. There's a proposal by Steve Wynn. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I wish the people at home could have seen that face when I said Steve Wynn, but um, he's got a proposal to do s some type of pedestrian crossover between his billion-dollar casino resort complex that he's going to be building. I mean, it's a fait accompli. He's received his permits. What do you think 
the the appetite for that is between you, because I think that's part of your district, is it not? The Assembly Square, Ward it's Four, actually, down to the river. It's actually, um, we do a lot in that district, but it is actually Tim. It, uh, to me, Mike Conway's district, I guess now. Twenty so, sixth. Yeah, it's a twenty. I think they're twenty. Twenty sixth or the twenty seventh. The Ward remember. One of Somerville right. uh, is okay. that. Um, but it is something that we've talked about. I think. Um, I think it remains to be seen. I think there are definitely some groups supporting it, but there's some challenges with actually how do we get people safely kind of across from that from the Assembly Square T stop, which is appealing, obviously, to. A casino, and what is that? If it's like? a heated yeah. tramway, and I'm taking it in February, it's okay. fine by me. But I'm not traipsing across right. the Mystic River in February. Yeah. Right, and some seniors might not be. Um, let's go on to some other initiatives. I just, you know, I do have to compliment the city of Medford. I know that you have a lot of friends in Medford. Um, city of Medford just established the Crystal Campbell yeah. Peace Garden yesterday. this morning. Yeah. Was it yesterday? Yesterday was the dedication. It was beautiful. Um, Really beautiful event, and it's really the the work of former Mayor Michael McGlynn, who, um, you know, in, in talking with the parents of Crystal Campbell, live in Medford, and she grew up there, and the community really was kind of rallying around them, and he was trying to come up with some way to honor mm -hmm. not just her, but... Um, the memory you know, the of memory the bombing of the victims bombing and, from the marathon. And what that kind of means to all of us. And there's a space right in front of the senior center in Medford. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice spot mm -hmm. right off the square that was sort of overgrown and not really used well. And um, Mayor McGlynn worked with many groups to raise a lot of money <laughs> um, to to make it into just a gorgeous park, and there's enough money that it can be maintained out right. of that fund. So the dedication was yesterday, and the families of all of the victims and a number of survivors were there and spoke, and it was just a really emotional and, um, but uh, it, it was really, um, you know, the focus is it's a peace garden, so right. it's a place to go and find right. solace and, you know, um, really connect. So nice. it was a really nice, nice. nice thing. Jumping back across the river, um, Ward 4, yes. updates on uh, Winter Hill revitalization. Yeah, I think there's, it's nice that the city, it's nice to see the city really paying attention to that area and working with Alderman LaFuente there um, in uh, working on a plan. I've been to many meetings and uh, there's been so many residents really coming to the table to come up with a plan for mainly Broadway and thinking about what could that look like, how could it be more pedestrian friendly with more business, local businesses that really you know, speak to that neighborhood. And We're um, seeing some of that. We We're seeing, seeing a brand new um, complex going up mm -hmm. right at Temple mm -hmm. and Broadway. We mentioned Winter Hill Brewing, a right. new business that's right. come in. And there's some smaller businesses that have come in uh, down um, closer to Leone's on that block, and they seem to be doing well, mm -hmm. and I hope that we can, you know, encourage more of that with the Star Market and some other complexes that we so can So now you're back on the hot sure. seat. What's happening with Star Market? Um, I cannot provide any updates, so it's still, still, in, court. It's still in court, and it's yeah. a real challenge for that neighborhood. It's right. one that I worked on before I was elected, and it's... it's um, it's something, obviously, we talk about a lot in that neighborhood. When I go door to door, what's happening with it? People are frustrated, rightly so. And I'm hopeful that we can find a way to, there's so many opportunities that, uh, that we could do with that space. There's been so many ideas by residents that could be, um, that it could be used for, and we just need to move forward. And so. it's an enormous parcel is. that is. is just waiting for redevelopment. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, because, you know, I mean, Christine, I follow, you know, I follow some of the blogs and people say, you know, we have we have to cross McGrath Highway to get to the nearest right. supermarket. Right. At least give us something right. back in this district. Yeah. And people don't realize if you're but if you're a senior, if you don't have a car, which people in the na neighborhood, that is a lot of people in that neighborhood. It's a less affluent section. Right. Yeah. It's, it is really hard to get to the stop and shop across McGrath and an interesting statistics statistic is the Rite Aid that's next to the, the mm -hmm. former Stop and Shop has 
um, the highest incident, I believe, in the whole state of milk and eggs and foods being bought at that Rite Aid. And that's because there's it's nowhere a, else for people to and go. And it's a walk, too. And it's, it's a walk. It's easy, yeah. So we know often things are more expensive and obviously not fresh vegetables at, at Rite Aid. So yeah. how do we make more access that's, you know, easy for people? Well, I know I know it was one of the other first meetings where I met you. It was about yeah. the store market redevelopment yeah. site. Yeah. So yeah. voters, what else are the voters telling you this year? Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of things that people are really interested in. One um, that I think Somerville is a leader on is um, looking at substance abuse and looking at the opiate um, crisis that we're all in. Um, I do think the state has done a good job at trying to respond to that. And there's definitely more to do. But this year we were able to pass a bill that looked at both youth prevention, because that's obviously a huge part of it, is getting to youth when they're um, before they start using and talking about both um, you know, strengths and ways to um, deal with the uh, sort of attractiveness of addiction mm -hmm. and also ways to um, address it when it starts to happen. So the prevention side and working with youth and then also the emergency side when on the people overdose on yeah. treatment, how to get them from overdose and the emergency departments into a treatment program. And um, we were able to um, incentivize some of that on the hospital end and create some more beds. There, There is definitely more to be done, especially I think on the case management side of how to help support people through treatment to recovery, and mm -hmm. that's a very long process. And help them maintain and recovery. Maintain that. That's right. hard, right. and we don't have a health system that's really set up for that, so it's... Well, our health system things. really is treatment mm -hmm. and then go home. Right. Right. It doesn't right. work. It's sad. I mean, that's a waste of money, so how to do that is our big question, and it, it's a hard one, but... A um, couple of ballot questions. Yeah. Want to do a lightning round? Uh, we can. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Legalization of marijuana. Yes? No? Um, I'm voting for it. I think it's a challenging issue in that uh, I, I wish, honestly, the legislature could work on it because I think there's some nuances there that the ballot question is not actually getting at. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably not politically feasible for the legislature to do, so... Um, but I think as far as criminalization and, and what we've seen uh, with our prisons, and we can get into that, um, I think it's, it's a, it would be a good thing. Uh, charter schools, lift the cap? Yes, I, no. No. Opposed to lifting the cap, it's not a good financial sense or good for our students. Uh, agricultural reform on free range. Right, it's that chickens. Uh, chickens are in very small cages now, so I am in favor of that. I think it's a good, it's a good thing that we should be doing. And you're going to have to help this graying head, the it's fourth. The, um, um, simulcast racing, I believe, or not simulcast, but uh, slot. Slots. Slot machine. Increasing number of slots. No, I don't think that's good for our economy or. For, it's not what we need in okay. this area. So. You did well on the lightning round. Usually I have to tell elected officials, you know, there's a reason they call them lightning rounds. <laughs> um, I'll get calls. Why did you say yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> well, but people are going to ask you that at the door yeah. anyway. Yeah. You know, so um, you're not going to get to all, how many people in the in the district? There's oh, 4,000? 40, 40, Thousand. Voters. Oh, voters? voters. Uh, probably 10,000. Probably 10,000. 10,000. Right, right. You're not going to get to all 10,000 doors. So we just we like okay. to give them a little taste of what you're, what you're thinking. You know, it was interesting. The charter school debate happened to flare up during the state Senate run mm -hmm. by uh, Senator Jalen. And, you know, we've tried our best not only here on Greater Somerville, but on Somerville Neighborhood News. Uh, Heather Avison, who's our director for that, we've tried to figure it out, mm -hmm. you know, the pros and cons. So hopefully we're going to be doing some kind of a special in Good. October Good. on the charter school debate. It's confusing to people, and that's part of the problem. So I think as much information as you can get out to voters is important. So obviously they know what they're voting on because it's a... Um, I think some of the campaign is meant to cause confusion, so to get the info out is important. Certainly the television ads that I've seen <laughs> are causing confusion because you don't know which side is 
airing right. that ad right. because they're both saying the same things. Right. Right. They're saying w it will give you more money for our public schools. Mm -hmm. Both sides are saying that, right. and it's very confusing to the right. general public. But um, I know we're going to wrap up in a few minutes here, but anything else you want to bring to the forefront of the Sure. I mean, something that we haven't talked about yet is something that I'm proud of this session. Um, it's actually, it's the jobs linkage um, trust that we passed. So it was a home rule petition in Somerville, which means the aldermen passed it. But it actually had to go through the full legislature, as some things do, as you know. Um, so not oh, that's not always a foregone conclusion. I think people think, oh, it just has to be rubber stamped by the legislature, but we actually do have to debate it and there are often questions about it. So um, what the bill, uh, what the now law does is allows Somerville to create a trust like we do for affordable housing mm -hmm. for uh, developers and new um, uh, commercial development to pay into to create job training and job placement. Mm -hmm. Because we know Somerville's booming right now, we know there's a lot of jobs, but we are leaving people behind who may not have training, who may not have the same networks, and we need to make sure that it's a city where everyone has an opportunity. I think it's a terrific it's initiative because I've often asked the question where uh, 10 years, 12 years into a development boom, and we're losing all right. of that revenue by not saying, put right. it in the kitty. Well, and making sure that everyone's benefiting, that right. this isn't just a few who are right. benefiting. So right. it's a good uh, policy. The city now is going to be implementing it, and um, but I'm proud to have been able to partner with them on it. So, yep. right. I want to wish you well Thank on you. November 8th. It's right around the corner. Um, website where the voters can get a, or anybody can get a hold of you. Yeah, Your so website. it's christinebarber.org. Um, it's my name on the... Mm -hmm. So you can spell that, dot .org, not dot .com. And you can see my office hours there and reach out, send me an email, give me a call. Always happy to sit down with voters and talk about issues or whatever's on your mind. And the State House office phone number? Uh, that's a good question. 617-722-2430. Uh, <laughs> Great. I have a wonderful staff person. She's uh, Claire Teluni. Um, also very helpful. So if you get her, you're in good hands. Terrific. All right. Thank you so much for having I'm, me. You, well, I'm sorry it took so long, but you know, you had six <laughs> people in front I of know. you that were that were monopolizing the political airwaves. So best wishes for November 8th. Thank you. Thanks. My guest has been State Representative Christine Barber running for re-election on November 8th, 2016. As always, thanks for joining us. Stay safe, stay informed. See you next time.